Hello everyone, welcome to SSH Introduction and Overview Part 1, the first in the multi-part series on SSH configuration. So looking at SSH, yes it consists of a client and a server program, but there's a lot more to it than just that itself. One of the things we'll be looking at briefly will be IP tables, another will be a program to fail to ban, and another one called an iHost. While these are not SSH directly, they are related to the overall security of it. There's many things that go into an operating system with security and applications. Uh, there's many different configurations you can use and it would be impossible to cover all of these in depth on a video series uh, to cover the entire base of knowledge involved with a given area so large as security. So, be that as it may, we're going to start out dealing with a couple of programs first and expand on later in some uh, future videos. So, moving on, let's move to the next page. These are the locations and the files. Uh, the first one, IP tables that rules, that is not a standard file. Uh, I will be explaining what that is. Same with IP six tables that rules. Obviously, IP tables. The first one there deals with IP version four, and the second one deals with IP version six. And next is etc. Networking interfaces, and that's uh, typical system file deals with the uh, IP tables as well, which you'll see. Next, we'll go into denyhost.conf. Uh, DenyHost is a program written specifically for dealing with SSH attacks. Uh, it's primarily designed for that. Yes, you can configure it to uh, monitor other things, but it's really intended for SSH. The next one is Fail to Ban. This one is very configurable, uh, handles a lot of different areas. Definitely uh, a diverse program, good for security sort of like deny hosts um, as far as SSH goes I think they sort of back each other up the next one is syslog.conf that's uh, important you know having your IP tables and having these other security programs on that deal with uh, denial of service and IP blocking and all of that they're good to have but if you're not reading the log files if you're not monitoring your system then why even bother to log it at all? You have to review your logs and keep track of what's going on. Yes, you can use a mail server such as SendMail or PostFix to automatically mail you and alert you when things are uh, coming up in the in the logs, but I think it's still a good idea to manually take a look at your log files, especially if you're only dealing with one or a few systems. If you're dealing with uh, a large company or something like that and you have a var log server that everything is pushed to and you've got you know tens or hundreds or thousands of machines that's a different story so then you have different tools that utilize for that but regardless monitoring especially manual I think is a good thing next up we get into the heart of the matter SSH underscore config that's for the SSH client and sshd underscore config obviously is for the daemon uh, or the open ssh server next up these are more addressing than actually needed but we have the 00-header file and also the issue.net which is the banner as it's known lastly uh, you will see a command there what that does is it launches the ssh client command line p is for the alternative port number because we're not going to leave it on port 22 the dash x there is for if you want to forward uh, x window over SSH username at and then the IP of the server the reason we have username in there as you'll see is because in one of the files we configure it so that you have to supply a username otherwise the system won't recognize you so there's our files that's our outline um, their paths you I would say once these are configured, you're definitely something that you want to back up on a somewhat regular basis, uh, especially if you want to have other machines set up the same way. And it takes a lot less tweaking just to.
copy the files over it and modify them. So moving on, let's go to the next one. And here we're looking at a series of files. As mentioned, this is our IP tables. And looking at IP tables, this is a custom script I've written. I'm not going to cover the entire thing in depth, it's way too much. But in a nutshell, it's basically broken up to two parts. Uh, one for version uh, 4, the other for version 6. There's also, in both of those, a couple different areas. Non-secure, it's not bound to an Ethernet. Uh, the more secure version, it's bound to an Ethernet NIC. So, depending on how someone wants to configure their system a little more or a little less secure, those are options that are available in this script. I use this script primarily to set up my IP tables uh, on every machine that I work on and then modify it from there. And if I ever have to flush my IP tables, uh, which it does here in the first command where it does IP tables minus F, then it reloads everything so it beats doing it all by hand. I prefer to use scripts if I can just because it's a lot faster. Next up is the interfaces. This is a standard file. Um, this is commented out down here at the bottom but that's where you would set it up if you had a, a static IP on your machine and you would uncomment those and then comment out up here in the middle section where it's using the DHCP. But regardless which one you go with Here's where it does the pre-up and it restores the IP tables and IP tables.rules files. Um, when you reboot the machine, IP tables doesn't save the settings, unfortunately, even with uh, IP tables hyphen persistent, which is a program that supposedly does it. Um, I just never got that to work, so I just do a IP tables restore. Uh, and then all my settings that are in this script here, if you look at the very bottom of it, you'll see in this section right here where it copies it to uh, the etc or Etsy directory there. So that's why you have the IP tables 6 dot rules and the IP tables dot rules. And the reason I'm talking about IP tables so much right here even though this is a video on SSH is because it doesn't do any good if you don't have your IP tables set up properly especially since we're going to be switching the port uh, off of 22 for SSH. Simply moving that port, while not a security measure in and of itself, simply moving that port will reduce a lot of traffic to your machine as far as trying to hit your SSH. They're just going to basically run into nothing and you can shut that port down, block it out with IP tables, uh, whatever you want to do with it. So going back here now to the interfaces, as you can see this is where it calls it up. Next we move into Deny Hosts. Deny Host is a program as mentioned before to cover in the uh, SSH and we'll go into this a little bit depth in further videos but I just kinda wanna give an overview of it right now. You can see there's quite a bit to look at. And keep in mind too in these videos, my setup may not necessarily be your setup. You might want to change some things around, configure it differently. I'm not saying that this is the only way to configure your system for SSH or security. It's just one way. And it's certainly not complete in everything that I do. Uh, and nobody does exactly the same thing in their system. So use, what, uh, use whatever you want out of here. Take away what you want. Uh, if you have suggestions, I'm certainly open to them. I'm always up for securing my own system. I know nothing's 100% so I'm open. Um, keep that in mind. We'll move on to the next one. failtoban.conf for the fail to ban program. This one is not uh, set up quite as much as the other one is but you can see I've got the log file going. I've got my value here set for info so I'm gathering information and so forth and so on. Next we move into the syslog.conf file. This has been modified of course like everything but here's one that we're looking at especially and this is the kern.warning which is moving to the var forward slash log forward slash IP tables.log. IP tables.log is not a standard file on Linux like 
the cron or the syslog or the auth log is um, or even the user log it's one I made up so keep that in mind you can name this to whatever you want you could even go so fancy I suppose as to divide up your IP version 4 and your IP version 6 traffic but I'm not going to do that that's what grep is for with a cat so moving on down the line you can see how this is pretty much configured not a lot to it just a couple of customizations but it's important that you do your logging um, I'm not really gonna cover this any more in depth this particular file but it's important that you have these things set up so that you can look at your logs later on this is part of it all here we get into the SSH config this is for the client program itself not the server and this is the server the sshd config we'll cover that later on next this is the 00 header and this is just a basic alert you can change this to be whatever you want followed by the issue.net certainly these little warnings aren't going to keep somebody out of your system uh, I don't know what they would hold up for in a court of law or anything like that but there's certainly no harm in having them on and uh, I doubt it will scare anybody that's going after your SSH but at least you could say well they were warned I had a legal notice they broke into the system uh, I'm not a lawyer I'm not giving legal advice but it's kinda like um, having IT certifications versus not having them you're not gonna get fired from your job for having IT certs so there's no harm in having them uh, there's also no harm in having these I didn't run them for a long time but I figured what the heck I would throw them up so back to this that's pretty much the overview of uh, this video and we'll move on to the next one starting with IP tables